Okay, welcome back to members of uh, 121 Community Church in Grapevine, Texas, and our ongoing study in uh, this little paperback uh, entitled Studies in Hegel from Tulane University Press. We're going to take a look at uh, pages 16 to 50, and it's a pretty good little essay on the, uh, just doing a recap of Hegel's overall teaching. It's uh, called Hegel Revisited by Feibelman. And uh, it's pretty good because he takes a look at Hegel through the triad of uh, spirit, nature, and culture. So we're going to examine Hegel through the triad of spirit, nature, and culture. Let's go to block one and take a look at the dialectic and spirit. The dialectic as out of uh, Aristotle's doctrine of becoming, where all opposites are to be considered possible correlations. That there is an interaction between correlatives. And that it does even take up a step of uh, negation. It's a discourse which is qualitative and circular in its reasoning and especially subject and object are fused together. There's no separation of subject and object. They are united together. We know that to be true with Hegel in the positing of an internal externality. And they are fused together by that which is eschatologically beyond them, a future that is beyond them. So we take a look at the fusion of subject and object, and it does enlist metaphysical categories, and Hegel's dialectic does enlist the philosophical method and it is a dialectic which is concerned with ontology. It is a ontological dialectic. And again, ontology, it just means structure of existence, okay? It just means worldview. It's a big word for worldview. But uh, Hegel's system is all about the dialectic of forming an ontological structure of existence, a worldview. And the self plays a very constitutive role in that formation of a worldview. And it's all about the evolving self-conscious self. Our worldview evolves as our own state of spiritual self-consciousness evolves. Hegel's dialectic is both a uh, heuristic, characterized by debate and argument, and ontological, characterized by forming a structure of existence, a structure of being. It does include contradiction or negation, the finite transitory surface reality is not the real. Reality is a hidden self-enclosed circular process behind surface reality. And we've said that many, many times, but Hegel reminds us finite surface transitory existence is not the real. The spiritual reality is a hidden self-enclosed circular process behind surface reality. We take up a dialectical logic that overcomes, I love this, this sounds like Moltmann, this dialectical logic overcomes the hopelessness of contradiction. Because for Hegel, contradictions can be resolved through the dialectic to reach a higher fusion of the opposites being reconciled. 
It's the work called the activity of the categories or the activity of the concept for Hegel. And that defines our world of being. That defines our world of existence. Everything is a part of the whole. Everything participates within the absolute idea. Remember Hegel's pan and theism, not pantheism, but pan and theism. All existence takes place inside the absolute idea, the absolute spirit of God. Nothing can exist outside of God. God is the I am. God is being itself. God is the absolute idea. And nothing can exist outside the absolute spirit. Nothing. That's called pan and theism, all in God. And we do interpret our externality through the philosophical perspective. And then we discern the ontological relationships between the concepts that make up the kingdom. We discern the concepts, the spiritual concepts that make up the kingdom, and we discern the interrelatedness between those concepts that uh, allow us to shape them into an organic ontological world view. So there is a dialectical activity which Hegel identifies as the work of spirit, dialectic and spirit. But there is also an external world that we participate in. So there is a dialectic in nature to consider. So the dialectic and spirit address the subjective side of Hegel or subjective spirit. Now we're going to take a look at objective spirit, dialectic and nature in block two. Block one was subjective spirit. Now we look at objective spirit in block two. Dialectic. Hegel's dialectic is not merely subjective. It includes objective nature. But we do emphasize the qualitative over mere empirical data. Life is more than the surface empirical data. The real of nature has value equal to consciousness. Dialectic has been ignored by traditional physics, by traditional science. Truth by correspondence needs to be opened up. We need to transcend the limitation of sensate surface experience. We've got to get beyond that. That's not the real. We do that by recognizing that the philosophical categories do apply to physics and science as well. So we put together kind of a fusion, a synthesis. And here you go, block two, note three. The purpose of nature is to produce spirit. We're supposed to live in the realm of spirit. We are human beings. We have physical bodies. But we are to live in the realm of spirit. We are to participate in the realm of absolute spirit. What did Christ tell the woman at the well? Those who worship God, those who know God, will know and worship him in spirit and in truth. What did Christ try to teach the disciples in the entire second half of the Gospel of Mark? To perceive life spiritually to take up the practice of noesis, spiritual perception. Don't interpret everything according to surface reality. Look at the deeper spiritual significance of life. Learn to think in a spiritual way. Learn to recognize a realm of spirit in your own history, in your own culture, in your own environment. Realize that there is an active, ongoing realm of 
spirit. Transcendence is real. The realm of spirit is real. And uh, I'll never compromise that belief. I mean, and every believer should stand firm on that. You know, uh, there is a realm of spirit. And we recognize that. We participate in that realm of spirit. And Hegel emphasizes that again, again, and again. So the purpose of nature is to produce spirit by reclaiming its higher significance by recognizing the signs that count for the kingdom. We need to recognize the signs within our experience that contribute to a higher significance, a higher spiritual significance. And in that way, nature will produce spirit. We create a synthesis between subject and object because what do we posit? We posit an internal externality. Construct our worldview within the inner self in subjectivity within the inner self we formulate a world view and then we posit that world view at the forefront of our mind as a filter through which we will interpret our culture through which we will interpret our history through which we will interpret our reality so we posit it at the edge of objectivity so our worldview is posited as an internal externality internally constructed externally posited an internal externality Nature comes to our self-conscious knowledge when it reaches its kairos time to be known. There are moments, those kairos moments, those opportune moments, when the realm of spirit wants to be recognized, when the realm of spirit wants to be known. So that's a very important statement at the, the very bottom of lot two. Nature comes to our self-conscious knowledge in its kairos time to be known moment. There are moments of opportune spiritual kairos time that unveil the universal to us. We can see beyond the particular particular aspect of service reality and recognize the spiritual universal. Those are Kairos time moments, opportune spiritual time moments. Remember, there's Kronos time, which is secular chronological time, and there's Kairos time, which is vertical divine spiritual time, opportune time. So very important, we got the uh, subjective spirit that we examined in block one. And then Fableman had us examine objective spirit in block two. And now we take a look at absolute spirit in block three. We've looked at subjective spirit, objective spirit, and now those two are fused together in absolute spirit, which is uh, the formation of a spiritual culture, a culture that has given way to the realm of spirit. So it's dialectic and culture in block three. Abstract metaphysics is embedded within our concrete society. There is such a thing as a national consciousness. And it is a, an overall implicit ontology, an implicit spiritual worldview that needs to be lifted up and recognized. There is a spiritual worldview as a 
a spiritual worldview that is embedded in society already within an objective way to be picked up by subjective participation. But there is a there is an existing implicit objective ontology at work. There is a realm of spirit, culture, and implicit ontology. It is empowered by the IDAS ideas of the kingdom within society. Ideas like creation, fall, crucifixion, resurrection, new heaven, new earth, return to the Father. Those are the IDAS ideas within society that empower this implicit ontology. And those terms or those IDAS concepts uh, are fall, or creation, creation, fall, redemption in the cross, resurrection, new heaven, new earth, return moment to the Father. There's a organic collective of the IDAS ideas within society that empower this implicit ontology. It's taken up within the arts and the sciences both. Nature acquires its spiritual identity through the form of this spiritual culture. And it's through a dialectic between subjective spirit and objective nature. The dialectic between block one and block two will bring about the spiritual culture in block three. So culture as a spiritual form, block three, note three. Social order will become an ethical, moral world or a spiritual culture. Culture is an expression of universal mind, or for Hegel, universal spiritual mind, the mind of the eternal Lagos, where truth is energia actualized, and each individual strives for the good of sacrificial virtue. Agape, sacrificial virtue. We live to participate through actions of sacrificial virtue, the sacrificial good, which is agape. But uh, this is, it's a recap of Hegel's entire philosophy. And we've done our own recaps. My recap looked very different because my recap was a picture of phenomenology. This is a triad for a recap. But it's, a, it's simplified, so it's easier to grasp. Easier to grasp than my summary. My summary was pretty complicated compared to this. But I like this. Spirit, nature, culture. Hegel's all about spirit and nature in dialectical relationship to bring about a culture of absolute spirit. Subjective spirit and objective nature are continually interacting with each other to bring about the realm of absolute ideal spirit. So the three moments given to us by Feibelman were dialectic and spirit, block one, dialectic and nature, block two, dialectic and culture, block three. I thought that was a very, very good um, summary recap. You know, if you go to my summary uh, playlist, the first two lessons in that summary playlist were uh, pictures of the uh, entire summary of Hegel's phenomenology. But this is a summary of Hegel's phenomenology as well. But it's simplified much more than mine was. Mine's got eight steps and kind of a 
does form a circle, but it's a eight step circle for my summary. This, uh, which I like mine, but uh, this one by uh, Feibelman is pretty good for a, a simplified recap of the phenomenology as spirit, nature, and culture. Dialectic and spirit in dialogue with dialectic and nature to bring about dialectic and a culture of spirit. Pretty good little uh, essay. I really enjoyed this. That's pages 16 to 50. This is our second essay. Our next lesson we will pick up in the third essay within this collection.